know, an architect has a reputation and if they find something that works, it's much harder to get them off the spot. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my co-host, Beth Papnikolov. And today we're talking about building products, marketing, sales, strategies, how to get in front of your customer, even a little bit about should you integrate Spanish into your marketing. There's some really interesting insights there. We've got an awesome guest lined up for you today. Beth, you want to introduce him? Yeah, absolutely. We are really excited to welcome Jerry Messina to the show. He is a building products marketing executive. He has a ton of experience in social, digital. He is a guru when it comes to building materials and has done and seen it all from a marketing and sales perspective. So Jerry, thank you so much for your time. We are excited to have you with us. Wow, great. Thanks for the introduction, Zach and Beth. It's great to be here. Jerry, you and I have gotten a chance to know each other over the years through different conferences and events, but for our listeners, why don't you just kick us off and share a little about yourself, a little about your insight in the industry, And then I'd love to dive in and hear from you about who you've marketed and sold to, because I think that that's always really helpful for our listeners is like, hey, what's your context here? So there's a couple of questions there, but why don't you just dive in and give us a little bit of your background. Way back when I started as a mechanical engineer, uh, studying engineering. And my first role was installing manufacturing equipment for a big consumer products company. And then I got my MBA along the way and I kind of just morphed into marketing for grocery, club stores, mass merches like Walmart. And then slowly I I went to the dark side to building products, you know, hitting up big box and the contractor and the distributor. And they say, once you're here, you never leave, right? (laughs) There you go. (laughs) You mentioned you started in in CPG, but you've got a pretty good understanding of architects, contractors, et cetera. Talk to me a little bit about what you see that's working for building product manufacturers from a marketing and sales perspective. It's funny, CPG, you know, we, we say it's fast moving. You know, you buy a $3 kitchen cleaner every six months. There's no risk involved. You know, you don't like the smell or the fragrance, you know, big deal, no, no loss. And as a marketer, you have so many tools, you know, TV, print, couponing, a lot of point of sale data. But as you move into the building products world and start trying to reach the architect or the contractor, you know, these lead times expand, you know, we're talking years, you may do a roof every 15 years, you may, you may put a new bathroom in every 10 years or paint your walls every few years. So the lead time is much longer and the, the risk is much higher to the owner. So it really takes a different mindset. And a big part of marketing is branding, right? I've seen that in the building products world, the brand, I, I sometimes call it, it's hidden. So you look at your wall, right? Like I'm looking at the wall behind you, Zach, and it's, you know, nice blue, but you know, the, the, the brand that it was, you know, you forget that. Oh, very quickly. Yeah. And we, we hear about that from other manufacturers too. They're like, how do I market a product that frankly, nobody wants to know the name of? Right. I mean, you can see that wall, but like, what about the plumbing inside of it? Yeah. Right. You know, like, or the electrical inside of it. And it, that's hard, right? The owner isn't going to say, I want Acme plumbing in that wall. So you really have to go after the distributor and contractor and and be top of mind because the brand isn't in front of you, like, you know, on a TV, watching a Sony TV, say, oh, this is a great picture. Oh, it's a Sony. You know, it's kind of reinforced every time you use it. But every time you walk out on your deck, you know, it's a nice color, it's comfortable, it's, you know, it's built well. But you're like, oh, I don't remember the brand. I might not even know the brand because the contractor was the one who said, hey, this is the brand you're going to use no matter what, you know? So it's tough for a manufacturer to kind of overcome some of those objections. Is there anything you've seen that works really well to help reinforce the brand, to help bring the brand top of mind? Because to your point, so much of building materials, if it's doing its job, it disappears. If you're Mm. thinking about it, it's probably because it's broken. Or is it working the way (laughs) that you want? So you kind of don't want people to think about it. But anything you've seen that works to help bring or be more memorable? Your podcast does a good job of talking about all these tools that try to keep uh, in front of the distributor and in front of the contractors when they're talking to the facility manager saying, this is the product I like because it goes in quickly. It's going to perform. You're not going to get a call back. You know, it's got a great warranty. And so it's, it's really about how to convince the influencer. And, and 
it runs on both sides. I mean, when you're talking about a commercial construction, there's so many influencers, right? And you all know architect, designer, consultants, whereas maybe on the home side, it's maybe just the homeowner listening to, to the contractor and what they say. So getting in front of them is really, is really pretty key and keeping in front of them. Are you seeing contractors more willing to try new products, Jerry? like today versus let's say even 10 years ago with the changing climate of contractors in the space? Because I know that like, if you look at all different audiences, building product manufacturers, target architects, builders, homeowners, you know, GCs, facility managers, I mean, the list goes on, but like contractors are the ones that are probably for the most part, the most reluctant to change. You could argue that, you know, pro against, but for the most part, and I'd be curious to get your perspective on, are you seeing people more likely to try new products? And if so, What's working to get them to try new products? Yeah, I think they are more willing than, say, an architect. You know, an architect has a reputation. And if they find something that works, it's much harder to get them off the spot. A contractor, especially now with labor shortages and the challenge to get folks who really understand how to install a product properly, are a little more open if you can come and say, hey, I can install this X percent faster and here's proof. You know, I did a study, a third party study even would be better. But if I did a study, I got other contractors who've used it and they're validating that this product went in well, it performed because it's so hard now for contractors to find qualified people to, to do the more technical aspects of a window installation, say that if you can have the product installed quicker, maybe pre-install some stuff at the factory so that when it gets to the job site, there's two less steps they have to do and they can get off the job quicker and get on to their next job. So they are a little more open than I would say an, an architect might be. That's interesting. You're probably like one of the first people, Jerry, that I've heard say that. Hearing your perspective on architects, it makes sense because architects, they, they are scared because their name is on the line. They don't want callbacks. They like using what they know, but at times they also want to like, they want to create a feeling or they want to do something new. They want to not get pigeonholed. And I've seen that to be the case too. That supply chain is maybe accelerating Mm -hmm. the gap between architects and contractors. That's really, really interesting. And maybe I know we always try to create evergreen content here, but like depending upon what supply chain changes, (laughs) (laughs) that may or may not be the case anymore. Well, often it's easier to get in front of a contractor than an architect, Mm, right? Because Mm -hmm. an architect, they're working on a project. And unless you're coming in with technical data that they can charge their time to that project, you know, they don't want to BS over donuts and and stuff like that. But a Mm -hmm. contractor, you can meet them on the job site, usually can steal a half hour, hour, show them some new, you know, products, new methods that you've got. And really, you know, have a good conversation. They're just, they're more accessible. Or go to a distributor. You do a uh, training show at a distributor. They're just more accessible in many ways. So that's why I say I think it's a little bit easier um, to get them to switch. So this kind of leads perfectly into my next question. You know, Jerry's, we were just chatting before the show. We were joking about how 2021 felt a lot like 2022.0. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm that year conversation. That's pretty everybody good. just turned it off. Everybody just turned off this episode. They're like, I can't deal. But what opportunities are you seeing in building materials as we go into 2022? Fingers crossed. It's some type of actual new year. Well, I mean, I think the tools continue to be available and, and you've done a great job on the podcast talking about like TikTok videos. I've seen that becoming much more prevalent. And I think the caution there is make sure they're realistic. You know, Mm. you don't need it really overly produced. You need the real world people doing it. And as Zach mentioned at the top, you know, you really have to think about Spanish because many installers, their primary language is Spanish. And if your product is one of those that you know, most products are like this. If it's installed correctly, there could be a real, you know, challenge and issue, maybe a warranty claim or, or what have you. So, I mean, taking that extra step and putting it in Spanish, I, I think is a real benefit for the contract. Oh, yeah. I mean, we talk to manufacturers all the time about, hey, I need to do a website redesign. And like, mm-hmm. we're always encouraging them to think about Spanish. Absolutely. 
especially if they're very contractor focused, because if their labor force is that's their primary language, you could be alienating them and they might not want to choose and they might, you know, quote unquote, wreck your spec because they aren't familiar with it. And so I've seen some really interesting things done, not only with written translation, but also videos too. Like uh, I've seen a couple of manufacturers also lean into doing video production just for Spanish speaking or Spanish native speaking contractors too, which is really smart. To wrap things up, you don't have to have the okay. talent. You don't have to have the talent speaking Spanish on screen. I mean, you can just have no words and then just do subtitles in English. Hundred uh, percent. And yeah. then oh, do Spanish great. the other time. Yeah. That's, that's a great that's, idea. That takes the friction out of it from the manufacturer side of having to source right. the talent and have an understanding of that. That's a great right. recommendation. And there certainly is the translation issues. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure you're translating it correctly for the vernacular that a lot of these contractors speak. Um, and, and videos, uh, we talked about this before is that, um, it's beyond just TikTok. I mean, there's basic install videos, yeah. um, and you mentioned how to reach architects and, and one, um, video concept that I had done was a 360 video. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but oh, it literally yeah. is, um, you know, you can put it on your, your phone because, um, an architect or a contractor want to see how you make your product. Right. And especially mm-hmm. now no one's traveling, but. So you can't get them into your factory. So could you bring your factory to them? So one thing uh, that was successful for me was we actually filmed the 360 all immersive video of our factory. And you're literally just standing there and you could look up and and see the tanks and look down and literally see the forklifts driving by. you. You can turn around and see the people walking by. It's literally you're standing in the factory and everything is moving in the bubble all around you and you control what you see. And then we took it one step further is put it on the job site. So you're literally standing, in this case, on a roof with the contractor installing a product. And you can turn around and see the other workers. You can look up in, in the sky and see a plane flying over it. So it's, you're literally there. And behind the curtain, as we sometimes call it, is a real plus for, for architects, especially who want to know a little bit more about your product and how it's made. Contractors, you know, they want to see what's going on. And, you know, know that they're getting quality product. That's a really smart idea. I've seen that done with like Matterport with like, I'm going to see the inside of a house or something like that. I can go yeah. and look at everything, but job site and facility, I think is a really great idea, especially as people are leaning into the fact that we're looking at not only people that want to travel, that don't want to go in places, but also just the efficiency component. Like we talked about that in relationship to, to trade shows. Like, yeah. are people going to go to trade shows anymore? Cause they see like, well, I can do just about as much work as I can without going to a trade show, but we still want people to see our, our facilities. So that's really, really smart. It's a great idea. Jerry, I'd love to hear your perspective. You know, we always like to ask people, Hey, like what's the one piece of advice you would give a building product manufacturer in the space if they want to succeed, if they want to win. We talked about a lot of different tactics and ideas, which I think are awesome. But if you're just sitting in front of any manufacturer, you're looking at the next year, three, five years, even 10 years, what do you see as the biggest opportunity for manufacturers in our industry? No pressure. <laughs> you know, I'm going to hop out and yeah. say, I go back to something I call block and tackling, which is, yeah, there's a lot of great tools out there, but but unless you have a product that that's well researched that hits you know the needs and wants of your ultimate target that data sheets product samples revit models are all easily accessible on your website your sales your customer service folks are all trained properly on the products and the solutions that you offer your warranty and installation support is top notch you know you have case studies to prove why your product i mean all that kind of foundational fundamental stuff is really key and i think many companies kind of want to go off to these you know fancy things it's cool it's great but they kind of forget kind of the basics you know an architect wants a data sheet they want it easily accessible they want it updated so before you start doing some kind of instagrams whatever let's just make sure that your your basis is is done correctly and and i think we all have plenty of, of, of room to fix it and, and make it better. That's great. Jerry, if for our listeners, if they want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, sure. It's Jerry with a G on LinkedIn. Just send me a note and I'll be happy to get back to them. That's great. We'll make sure we link to that in our show notes too. And for our listeners, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you go to venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Popniglov. 
Thanks, everybody.